birders paradise that is what this place is known to be many visit this place which is also popularly known as the silk route but very few care to notice the amazing bird life that exists here So this video is a mixture of the photos which I received back in 2016 and now in 2020. So I hope you will like it. I am also uploading uh, many more videos on treks and travelling to unknown destinations. So if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I will request you to please hit the red subscribe button on the right bottom corner of your screen. And if you have done it then thanks a lot. Cheers and enjoy the video. So where is Pangolakha? Out of the eight wildlife protected areas in Sikkim, Pangolakha Wildlife Sanctuary is a wildlife reserve in the East Sikkim district of the state of Sikkim in India. The total notified area of the park is around 124 square kilometers. Altitudinal range of the sanctuary lies between 1760 meters to 4390 meters. Due to this altitudinal variation, one can find a lot of ecozones here. Now how to reach here? Well, Sikkim is well connected to Shiliguri in West Bengal and one can reach at NJP railway station from Kolkata by an overnight train or access the air route at Bagdogra airport also. From Shiliguri, one can hire a car and reach wrongly at Sikkim first, within 3-4 to four hours. Here you need to make the permits for entering into this restricted area. After that, you can have your first stay at Padamchen, which marks the beginning of the sanctuary. It will take you another 2 hours to reach here. So this is the forest check post and we need to uh, uh, do the payment for the passes over here for camera and stuff because we are entering into Pangolakha Wildlife Sanctuary. So. Padamchen is a small hamlet in the old silk route at a distance of only 5.5 kilometers from Nimachen. Altitude of Padamchen is around 7000 feet and mostly covered by temperate broadleaf forests with thick undergrowth vegetation. There are plenty of staying options in affordable homestays here. Our tryst with the avian beauties started from the homestay itself. It was early morning of March 2020 and what a find it was to begin with. Bard Cuckoo Dove. It is extremely difficult to capture the video of a bird without using the tripod. Hence whenever I had the opportunity, I made use of it. But in most cases, I could manage only photographs. But one thing for sure is that you need to start early with the first sunlight as the birds are very active in the early hours of the day till around 8 am. After which there is a silence. Again in the afternoon, after around 3 pm, you may find some activity in most cases. Well, let me tell you 
that the males among birds are more attractively colored in majority of the cases. This will help you identify the upcoming pictures and videos. Another stunning sighting, black-throated sunbird. The monastery at Lingtam is a nice place to visit surrounded by lots of bird activity around. Back in 2016 May, near the famous Kyokola Falls, we could view the beautiful Plumbus Water Red Start. I will stop the narration now for you to enjoy some pictures of birds found here. This was just the beginning. Pangolaka Wildlife Sanctuary, with its biodiversity and altitudinal variations, has a vast range of bird species that dwell here. Within a few hours, one can gain two to three thousand feet in altitude. Thus, many birds which are found to reside in summers in the higher altitudes migrate to the lower ones during winter. There are very few places on earth which presents such an opportunity to the wildlife. We will now move to the higher altitudes of Zuluk, Nathang, before returning to Padamchen and the nearby areas again on our return journey. We got some exotic species on our way back, so stay tuned till the end. Zuluk is a small hamlet at an altitude of 9000 feet and mostly covered by pines and steppe grasslands. Stay options in Zuluk are homestays mainly. The main attraction of this area is the zigzag road. On clear days, one can even see the magnificence of mighty Kanchanjanga from a nearby viewpoint named as Tambi. This place is at a distance of around 10 kilometers from Padamche. Few areas in Zuluk are restricted for photographers since those areas lie under army surveillance. It was raining that day in March 2020 and we checked into our hotel quietly to enjoy the rain come snowfall from our room and from the balcony itself we were treated to a variety of bird life. The first one was yellow billed blue magpie. They usually come in pairs or in flocks of up to 10. A blue fronted red start. Back in 2016, 
we had come in May and the activity of birds were very prominent at that time because it was the mating season with full blooming rhododendrons around. We had found a lot of pikas around, mainly two varieties, the Indian pika and the Maupin's pika. In Zuluk, we often come across these guard posts along the edges of the road made for safety. Who knew that on one of the bends, you will find the Himalayan buzzard sitting on top of it, a perfect perching spot to look over the area. Don't get surprised if you spot a flying streak of fire suddenly in such a landscape. Out of nowhere, you may spot a small fireball moving in the distant branches. It is the beautiful fire-tailed sunbird. March 2020, when I came here again, I was welcomed with heavy snowfall. It was challenging to do birding under such circumstances, as they don't do much activity when it is either raining or snowing. However, I saw a huge flock of plain mountain finches near Dupidara. They breed on these alpine slopes, winters in open forests and upland cultivation. I was overwhelmed to find out another flock which initially looked like the mountain finches from a distance. But I was excited to find out that it was the winter visitor to the Himalaya, Altai Accenter. They are characterized by an extensive white throat and diffused rufous spotting across the breast, extending onto the flanks. The weather in Pangolakha is very unpredictable, with clouds moving in every now and then. So we will now share the experience of sighting the most colourful bird of the Himalaya, the Himalayan Monad. When we were driving uphill in the summers of 2016, on one of the bends, our driver stopped and pointed towards the edge of the road. Well, you will confuse it to be one of the roadside indicators but there it was scanning the valley underneath. And then it flew down and gave us a spectacular view of the habitat and itself. A multicolored dot amongst the barren landscape. What a view it was. It then sat on an edge, giving us a wonderful habitat shot. 
In search of a better sighting, we headed further up in altitude. We reached Lung Thung, a small hamlet, took breakfast and were just walking on the road when I turned back to the dwellings to see one monal coming down the slope. It was foraging all the while while coming down and we had loads of pictures. So let us now enjoy these pictures. During our short stay for a few hours in Lung Thung, we had another terrific experience with a mammal, the Siberian weasel. dark-breasted rose finch, a bright and beautiful bird. It was the flowering season and they had come in large flocks, enjoying the nectar from the rhododendrons. On our way to Nathang Valley, we got to see Eurasian cuckoo, Rufus Morph. It was raining and it was sitting pretty on the tree branch. We also got a very short glance at the beautiful fire-tailed Mizornis. As soon as you cross Lakshman Chowk, you will notice that the vegetation in most of the places are covered by rocky outcrops, rhododendron shrubs and steppe grasslands. Nathang Valley is at a distance of 22 km from Zuluk but lies above the snow line. Altitude being 14,000 feet, the oxygen level is also lower by at least one third than that of the plains. Kupup is the last bordering village in Old Silk Route at an altitude of 14,200 feet and at a distance of 18 km from Nathang Valley. The main attraction is the Kupup Lake or Elephant Lake because of the shape of an elephant that it has with its trunk on the farther side. On our way back from Kupup, we found the Alpine Accenter. Further down, we got to see two important mammals of the region, Himalayan Cerro and Himalayan Brown Goral. Back in Zuluk, 
I found myself a favorable spot to look over in the valley in front with small shrubs and trees ideal for birds to perch on and was not disappointed It was now time to go down back to Padamchen. So we started early so that we could do some birding on the way. We were not at all disappointed by the decision.
Like this, the birds were abundant here. I could photograph only a few. Pangolaka still remains a heaven for hundreds of bird species. Recently, it has also become a hotspot for normal tourists. And with it, the small hamlets are also growing in size. But if we keep throwing wastes on the mountain slopes like this, this beautiful place will get destroyed very soon. The birds will also lose their home. So whatever we do, we need to do it sustainably without harming nature. If we learn to coexist with them, then both will be benefited. Or else, at first the birds will vanish. Then surely, it will be our turn.